Oh, this is so exciting. Hey everyone, I am live with three lovely, beautiful ladies from all around the world. We have a very multicultural panel here today. Um, I'm Amy from the channel Blondie in China. Lovely to see everyone joining us today. So let's go around the circle here and briefly introduce ourselves. Jen, would you like to start? Sure, I can I can start for us. So hi everybody, my name is Jen or my Chinese name is Jenny. Um, yeah, so I have a YouTube channel and an Instagram. Uh, I've been traveling around in China and now I just make videos kind of just talking about culture and practicing Chinese because I'm still in the intermediate stage of that. So just practicing yeah. and, uh, learning with everybody. And that's kind of what I do. Yeah, I live in Canada and um, just relaxing here and, uh, you know, chilling at home all day, every day. What have, <laughs> what have you been doing with your free time in lockdown slash quarantine? I guess I took a course. Um, I have just been kind of relaxing a little bit, finding some new Netflix shows, making videos, um, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, and trying to study Chinese. It's hard for me though, you know, I'm doing, yeah. my, I'm doing my best to stay productive. Your Chinese is incredible, Jen, like way better than mine. So you're my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, just a, a fun fact for everyone watching today, all of our panel members can speak Chinese. All of them are better than me. So we're going to have a little Chinese conversation a bit later. Um, that'll be super fun. Um, I'm going to head over to Ella. Um, Ella, could you introduce yourself for the stream? I think you're on mute. <laughs> oh, there we go. You're Hi. off mute now. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> So I'm Ella from the channel Chinese Black Olive. I've been studying um, Chinese for quite a while and yeah, that's just it. <laughs> Where are you based at the moment, Ella? Um, at the moment I'm based in Ghana, west of Africa. Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never been to Africa. I've always, well, I've been to Morocco, but I, which is technically on Africa, but I, I don't know. I really want to go to like Africa proper. Um, I, I find I'm so fascinated by the culture. Um, so hopefully yeah, one day I can well. come visit you. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, sure. um, a quick question for you, Ella. Always How's welcome. the Chinese food there in Ghana? How's the Chinese food in Ghana? Oh, Chinese foods in Ghana are not so common. There are like okay, restaurants yeah. where Chinese people go to to purchase food. So if you find foreigners there, then it would be foreigners who are open to um, the Chinese culture, kind of like that. So it's not yeah. something you easily bump into. Yeah. So yeah, I, could, I, I thought really that might good. be the case, but <laughs> that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I had my first Nioa in Ghana, not in China. Oh. So. <laughs> Just for our audience that don't speak Chinese, can you describe, actually say what that is in English? Um, Nioa is um, frog meat, you know. The meat out of, I love um, frog meat. Frog, yeah. <laughs> How good is really? Sichuan frog, frog? You know that Sichuan frog style? They have restaurants that are just specifically for mm -hmm. frog. Oh, my God, so delicious. Everyone go out and get yourself yeah. some frog. Um, so good. Okay, happy, on to you. You are the Asian enthusiast and you are true to your name, girl. I am always so inspired by your Instagram stories and your videos, like for everyone who's watching now, happy speaks like very fluently, Japanese, Chinese, Korean. And she's, every time I open up her Instagram story, I'm like, okay, what's she gonna be doing? <laughs> Singing in Korean or dancing to Chinese song or like eating Japanese food, it's like, Literally. It's always a lottery, but I'm sorry. Happy you take over. Can you introduce yourself for everyone? I know, right? <laughs> so amazing. You're so amazing, Happy. Come on. No, you guys are such an inspiration for me, honestly, to just keep like posting and like really yeah. just grind for the, making YouTube videos and content because you guys are like just so cool. So hello, everyone. My name is Happy and my Chinese name is Luo Ying. Luo Yang, the Luo Ying's Heidi. So I have been learning Chinese for seven years or so. That's a long time. <laughs> and I've been, um, I'm currently located in Hawaii and I've been living here for about two years. I originally grew up in oh. the American Midwest <laughs> and in the Midwest, there was not very much diversity, but I fell in love with Japanese first through anime 
and then oh. got to go to Japan for 10 days for free through the Kizuna project and realized just how big the world is and how much there is to learn and the the way that like language really opens up and unlocks this whole other like way of thinking and whole other way of life and that just really inspired me to work hard on learning Japanese then I made a ton of friends with Chinese exchange students. I studied abroad in Japan for a year, learned Chinese and Japanese and Korean in Japan, and then also studied abroad in Shanghai and independently traveled in China for seven months. So that is that freaking time, awesome. Girl, you're preaching right to my soul about like how language opens up a whole culture. Like I've had that experience with China and I would love to have that experience again with another culture. I can only Im imagine it's only even more rewarding. Jen and Ella, do you guys know any other languages? Uh, well, what's, uh, what's the native language in Ghana, um, Ella? I didn't even think about that. There are, actually there are so many languages in Ghana, but the most common that's spoken is English. After English, oh. chi, and then I speak ever, so. Yeah, chi and ebe, okay. in addition to English. Yeah, <laughs> that's my language. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I'm so fascinated. Um, I What hear, about you, Jen? Can you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I cut you off. I, I hear ebe. Ebe is also a language in Germany. I have no idea. <laughs> Germany? <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that, but that's awesome. I'll ask my boyfriend. <laughs> He's German. Um, see if he's ever heard of that. Um, Jen, what yes, about you? Can you speak any other languages? I can't speak any other languages, but my parents are Polish. Like my whole family is Polish, so I can actually understand. My mom is Polish. Right out of my grandparents are Polish. Like I have a whole entire Polish side of my family. Get out of town. Can you mm -hmm. understand how to speak Polish? Only the very rude words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. That like sit down or like don't stop moving so much like these <laughs> that you, okay, I'm gonna t give you a word that I know and see if you know it too and we have a little communication session in Polish dupa. Uh -oh. do you know <laughs> yeah do you understand what dupa is <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it means butt right <laughs> butt. really oh my god that's hilarious yeah bringing that quality content to today's stream. Um, I, I want to get happy to give us a little um, show, a show and tell of her languages. But first, I just want to shout out some super chats. Thank you so much. Uh, Subki, you're in Sydney. You should come join our meetups when they're back on. Um, and thank you so much to C Bien, who has uh, given us the super sticker as well. Thank you so much. Um, so happy. I was wondering if you could give us a little like roulette of um, speaking a sentence, but then shifting midway into from Chinese to Japanese to Korean. Do you reckon you could like give us okay. a little, or it could be one sentence each. I'm okay. so excited for this. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello, I'm from the United States. 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 <laughs> Far out, girl. I am so inspired. Everyone in the chat, can you like let us know what you think? How did how did Happy go? Everyone in the chat, let us know. Oh my gosh, that was freaking amazing. But I want to totally like just say that is so cool that in Ghana, like there's so many different languages that like multilingual is already the norm. Like, can we just like celebrate of how awesome yes. that is? Like, come on. Hundred <laughs> percent. Right. Wow. <laughs> and and Ella, actually, does do you think uh, coming from a very multilingual background, do you think that helps you in learning new languages in general? Because for me, coming from only English, only ever English, learning Chinese was kind of a struggle for me. But I was wondering if you already have a lot of different languages in your head, whether learning another one is a bit easier. What what's your thought on that? Um, actually, I <laughs> yeah, I think so. I actually think that because of my language. Some of the pronunciations in Chinese are much easier for me because we yeah. have the ong, the ang, all of those things in my language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's much easier Amazing. to pronounce those words that are nasal, like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's really awesome. Actually, 
having having to know um, more languages is much easier if you're from a multilingual place. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you are forced to to um, communicate, especially in China. Not so yeah. many people are speaking English. So you just make up your mind yeah. on learning. It's learning. Yeah, that's so true. Else. It's so true. I wish that, that here in Australia there was a bit more pressure to learn other languages. I was always so jealous of my friends when I went to um, on exchange to China and there were Europeans studying there who could speak like already four or five different languages just because they were living on the border of Switzerland and somewhere and yeah. they had to learn like, you know, German, French, English, Italian and, you know, maybe they're learning Chinese as well. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I want to be here. Um, but yeah. Yeah, how about how, how's the situation in um, in Canada in terms of learning Chinese and languages, Jen? That's actually a really good question. So in Canada, I guess it's not really like pushed to learn any languages except for French. Um, oh. And even like we'll learn French when we're young, um, but it's not really like forced upon you. So if you're if you're wanting to learn Chinese, it's just a choice that you make. And then lucky enough, like my university teaches Chinese, which is how I. Uh, learned, um, but there's also some other courses and stuff that you can take. Um, but it's not too common, actually. It's pretty rare to find people who can speak Chinese who are like born Canadian. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like an interesting situation. I guess in Vancouver, for example, it's a lot more common to, yeah. to learn stuff like. I heard that there's so much Chinese culture in Vancouver, and like f finding good food and it's just very easy <laughs> when it comes to Vancouver. Completely. There's an entire section. It's called Richmond, and it's just all yeah. Chinese food. And it's like that's where all Chinese people live. Like it's like that sector is just everything. So next time I go to Vancouver, I must go there, and I need to try all of the restaurants because I hear they're very authentic and delicious. Amazing. Okay, let me know how that goes. Send me photos. Um, I've been enjoying my Chinese food exploration here in Sydney. Thankfully, we have a lot of really great options. Um, but I was just wanting to ask, what is um, briefly your histories with China? Like, why did you, did each of you go to China? Was it to study, to teach, to work? Like, what's your brief Chinese story? Um, Jen, we'll start with you. Okay, lovely. So I learned Chinese for two semesters, and then I decided to go to China for just one month. I went to Harbin and I spent- Oh, cool. Yeah, because I know you went there recently, right? So, <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was really nice, but I went in the summertime, so it was really hot still. Uh, yeah, and I liked it so much, so I continued learning Chinese for another two semesters, and then yeah. I, went to, uh, I actually went to Guangdong to volunteer teaching English, traveling, yeah. and then also back to Harbin to learn some more Chinese. So that's about that sounds it. sounds awesome. That sounds so cool. Uh, what about you, Happy? So I originally started learning Chinese kind of after I was already exposed to Japanese and Korean. And so Chinese was mainly because when I was in Colorado, I did this um, international like job there. And there were so many Chinese workers so that I just got so interested in like their culture, their language, because they were just so hospitable and kind and friendly. And I'm like, this works so perfectly. Oh my goodness, if I learn this language, I can make so many friends. So it like, yes. Well. <laughs> yep. And then returning back to my college campus, I realized, wow, there's so many Chinese exchange students that I can be friends with. So I made yeah. a ton of friends with them and was kind of the only like foreigner hanging out with all of the Chinese exchange students. <laughs> but it was so nice because they just really welcomed me and introduced me to like their food. I ate like my first chicken feed while in the Midwest, like that my friends <laughs> had made. And then also like <laughs> like those kind, like those were just like so much fun to, to learn about. And then I chose um, to be a Japanese and Chinese double major in university. So then awesome. I independently traveled in China before studying abroad in Japan and then went back to China for a semester and then wow. um, graduated. And then I moved here to Hawaii where Asian is actually the majority and multilingualism oh. is also very like normalized here and celebrated as well as cultural Amazing. heritage. And so with there already being like 170 plus beautiful years of history with like Chinese, Japanese and Korean immigration, like mainly yeah. Chinese and Japanese, here there's like this huge population of Chinese and Japanese speakers, like of, of just all beautiful backgrounds and ethnicities. So here is definitely oh, also where I've been learning a lot of Cantonese 
<laughs> which is so another funny. language to the list oh my gosh happy i cannot <laughs> i love dialects dialects are so much fun can you so do, demonstrate some cantonese for us <laughs> okay <laughs> wow happy like okay we're gonna get into this i want to ask you how you're doing this how you study what you're because i think i kind of have a clue i always see videos of you on instagram like learning songs in different languages and so guys today our topic is going to be about pop culture um everything pop culture but we'll get into that i still want to ask ella about her background with china um so ella do you reckon you could let us know your background with china <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for the question. But actually, um, today is 15th August. Um, this day, um, eight years ago, I went to China. Oh, <laughs> on this day. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What a coincidence. So I went there to, to study um, Chinese, first of all. And then after the, a year, I enrolled in a medical school, studied medicine, then came home for wow. internship went back and yeah that's it <laughs> that has just been wow <laughs> so, so you studied medicine in, in china yeah <laughs> wow that is so I cool medicine in china yeah. smart 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 girl um <laughs> that would be so difficult not only studying medicine but studying medicine in chinese like oh my goodness <laughs> that's next level <laughs> No, I, wow. I I studied it. In, no, I studied it in English, but um, oh, okay. most of our teachers, you know, in China, um, sometimes yeah. they cannot really express themselves. So yeah, you have to learn the language to be able to yeah to understand what they are teaching. But in the hospitals, like the number eight hospital, when you go there, you just speak Chinese only to your patients, everything. So you have to wow. practice it. <laughs> Yeah. That's fascinating. Did so? Were you practicing there in China, or just in terms of your degree? Just in terms of my degree. So okay. um, after school, I did my six months internship there. Then came to Ghana to do a year. Then went back to graduate. Yeah. So that's wow. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, thanks for sharing that with us. Well, I want to get into our main topic today. Um, so we are here to talk about Chinese pop culture. And I wanted to invite these ladies on because it's not my strong suit. Like I, I do dabble in the pop culture. I watch a few TV shows here and there. But these girls, they know their stuff when it comes to Chinese pop culture. So I wanted to first ask, like, what's your like, what attracted you to Chinese pop culture in the first place? And why? Why do you think it's important for you? personally to learn. Um, Jen, let's start with you again. <laughs> okay, what attracted me to Chinese pop culture? I genuinely feel like the second I started learning Chinese, I just started, I wanted to put myself into this environment. I said, if, if I'm going to learn Chinese, I'm going to learn Chinese, right? Yeah. So I literally started listening to the music and I just started putting on shows. Um, and mind you, this was like two months into learning Chinese. I just yeah listening to the music and I started trying to memorize words and like just I don't know why it became like I just started to love it so much and yeah. I feel like you learn a lot too like you learn more about how like Chinese music has a much different style than maybe some Western music even like the rapping for example is just so different mm -hmm. um and the the shows are absolutely incredible and you really get to know people and more about the culture that way too and I just found it was really interesting because it's just so different than than what I grew up with. So I just yeah. learned it so much. And uh, yeah, I think it's really helpful for learning Chinese because I, I guess when I was like listening to songs and I started memorizing the songs because I wanted to sing along with them in the car, then it's like you start to memorize those phrases that you're saying. The only problem I'm having though, let me tell you, it is now every time I want to say one of those phrases, I just want to sing it and instead of <laughs> <laughs> um, not good in like a public setting, you know, when you want to yeah. talk to people, but that's fine, you know? Um, and yeah, and like just all about the shows is like, I, I, lo I love listening to how people say things natively or like actually saying it out loud. Cause at that point too, I never went to China. So 
it was so interesting to me just to, to hear it and just to listen to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's so interesting to hear. Um, Happy, what about you? Okay. So I would say that I've fallen in love with so many different aspects of Chinese pop culture, like mm -hmm. specifically because of the way that it helps you connect with people and the way that you're able to just really like, um, like learn the songs that they love, learn the TV shows that they're watching. And I've had a majority of the music that I listen to introduced to me by like either um, like friends or I was also a live broadcaster in China when studying abroad there. And wow. I had a lot of my like followers help me with my homework and also introduced me to their favorite singers, like 80s, like Hong Kong singers, yeah! which is so much fun. And I've also just really enjoyed learning kind of the language of yeah. like, say like Billy Billy or like slang <laughs> words or references or Chinese memes, yeah. which we're going to go over today. So like those yes. the things are just so much fun because I love making people laugh. If I'm able to figure out like something that, or a reference or a quote or something from a movie or yes. a song lyric that's able to just make someone laugh, like I am so up for it. So that's kind of like yeah. one of my main goals is just to help people like just to have a wonderful time. That's beautiful. And like, I think in China, there are so many pop culture references. And I think it just takes your Chinese from classroom level to a level where you can really communicate and make good friends in country, because that's what they're talking about. That's what in day to day language they're talking about, what's cool on TV, you know, what what song they're listening to at the moment. So I feel like it's a really great way of connecting. And when I was living there with my Chinese friends for about six, seven months, I was getting more into it and I found it was easier and easier to communicate with them on a, like a deeper level, like a more fun friendship level when I knew more about the Chinese pop culture. So I feel like it's a really amazing tool for understanding, you know, Chinese people in general, like what they what they listen to, what they like, um, what they don't like. So that was really fascinating for me. Um, what about you, Ella? What's uh, what attracted you to Chinese pop culture? Okay, so I always say that if you want to be somewhere and live with the people peacefully, love their culture. So I just wanted to explore more, and I actually started exploring Chinese pop culture during this um, COVID time, the lockdown oh. in January. I was like, I have to do something <laughs> or else I'm just <laughs> going to be here feeling bored. Yeah, so yeah. I started exploring it, watching movies. I was like, oh, okay. My Chinese is, is going to get better with this. And that's it. So just to be able to mingle with the people and make more friends. That's yeah, why. That's beautiful. I, I have a similar experience um, <clears throat> when we went into lockdown here back in March. Um, I started watching Chinese Netflix shows and got really into it. So um, maybe we can do a little bit of a, um, a, share, a sharing of our favorite Chinese Netflix shows. So I'll go first because I actually have something I can share here. <laughs> so I have watched three shows on Netflix, um, a Chinese shows on Netflix. One of them, okay, I'll go in order of the one of how much I like them. The one I like the most that I watched on Netflix was called um, Accidentally in Love. Have you watched that one? I really like that. Um, very strong female lead. Um, she knows she don't take no shit from from the male from the male leads, which I really enjoyed. Um, the second one I watched that I liked but also didn't like um, was Well Intended Love. Um, when this this guy, essentially the plot of this show is this guy is like in love with her and then tricks her into thinking she has leukemia so that he can be the blood donor or the, the donor of the, anyway. And then they end up falling in love. It's It was yeah. a weird story, um, but like kind of enjoyable. And the one, the third one I watched that I really did not like because I felt like it really glorified domestic violence was Meteor Your Garden. Supplier. <laughs> yeah do you guys have this experience like have you guys watched this show i found it so effed up like yep is like the the male lead is like thrashing the female lead into the wall and then the male lead is still portrayed as the hero i'm like what's up with that do you have any thoughts on this guys like let's discuss i genuinely found it like i guess i was watching the show and up yeah. to the, the one point I, I believe you posted it on your story too amy 
And yeah. up until that point, I was like, okay, this is not a bad show. And then mm. when that happened, I was like, I don't. Yeah. Like I still finished watching the entire show to see where it would go. But after that point, I was just a little bit like, I don't know if I really like the direction of like the behaviors and where they're going. Yeah. Happy, have you watched it? I think I saw you reacting. Yeah. No, yeah. Because with Liu Qing Hua Yuan, so I actually saw the Korean version first and then the Japanese version and then the Chinese version. So it has a really oh. long history. And so there are oh. adaptions of it. And then also Liu Qing Hua Yuan. Originally, there was a like a Taiwanese version of it, like yeah. back in the 80s, oh, in the late 90s first. Yeah. And then this is a rendition of like Dao Lu. So there's kind of a big long history of it and the with that scene specifically that's more of like a kabedon kind of like like oh. um like kind of like situation which is more accepted in the or kind of like glorified in like japanese dramas i would say but then it didn't make the transition very well and i think that adaptions of it like there were parts that just kind of fell through the cracks and there have been a lot of those kind of situations with like Japanese dramas to Chinese dramas or Chinese dramas to Japanese dramas or like Korean dramas as well mm. and even like TV like game show adaptions as well yeah. so I think that was one that was kind of lost in like oh. the moral like aspect of it so but oh, then that's like, super interesting yeah, yeah making that because I was watching it better. like there is so much violence in this not just men towards women but women yeah. towards men and I was like mm -hmm. it seems really strange and and that's really interesting to hear that it comes from different adaptations. Was that violence kind of a part of the original part of the show, like way back when? Like, was that always kind of part of that show? Yeah, so I think that kind of the like violent aspect, so Japanese dramas and Korean dramas probably have more of a watered down kind of okay. version of it where, mm -hmm. but then the like Chinese version like had it more kind of like in your face, kind of like erupt kind of like feel to it. Yeah. And so I think that that's like where like the adaption like aspect of it really changed. But I think it's also beautiful that you're looking at it with a moral like standard, like that you understand what is good, what is right. Cause I think with like American TV shows, like that doesn't really work. <laughs> like I, I always want to be aware and careful when I'm watching or consuming anything from another culture, not to be judgmental and like judge something from my own cultural standpoint. So I didn't want to like come out and be like, that's wrong. Or like, this is, shouldn't be depicted like this. I wanted to like yeah. take the time to like understand a bit more about where it comes from. So that was a really interesting insight from you, Happy. Um, but yeah, interesting show, and I don't think I, I didn't I didn't watch the end of it. I, I stopped watching after that particular scene in like episode mm -hmm. six or seven. But um, Ella, do you have any favorite show TV shows on Netflix that you've watched in the past or in the past couple of months? Okay, so aside the one you have watched, um, in addition to that, I have watched one entitled. Um, I think it's. In line with Chinese traditional medicine, it says Princess at last. Yeah. Oh, I so think I've seen they that. I think I've seen a the, lot of that on it. Yeah. Chinese traditional medicine in there, and I wanted to do my masters before COVID happened. I wanted to master in Chinese traditional medicine, so oh, cool. I just it was really fun. That's so awesome. Was, um, yeah, a lady that was with a guy, they were together and it seems like the lady died. And so mm -hmm. she reincarnated and then entered um, one lady just working for him. It, it took him time to actually find out that, okay, that was the lady who was back to life just for him. Oh. So yeah, it was fun. <laughs> interesting. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Uh. There are a lot of like sad, whenever I've watched a Chinese movie, I feel like it always ends on a sad note. Like, what's up with that? It's like, oh, come on, can't we just have a happy ending and like have the pretty girl kiss the pretty guy and live happily ever after? But it's no, they're going to jump off the bridge and like <laughs> never see each other again. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so true. Like that's so true. No, that's okay. I feel like yeah, Chinese like dramas really showed me though that there are instances where it isn't a happy ending. Where it's yeah. like kind of like growing up on Disney, like always talking like, to believe in a, like the, an adaption where it's a happy ending when then yeah. realizing the original stories. 
like weren't <laughs> actually happy endings, like the Little Mermaid and stuff. So I think that was yeah. like a kind of like a shock, but also so good for like growing up as well. Mm -hmm. that, oh, no, I completely agree. Not happy endings. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> growing up, literally, I can't think of one. Well, I typically like those romantic comedies. I don't watch a lot of the horror or the depressing movies. So I only have a certain pool of movies that I've seen. But um, it's always a happy ending. It's like the girl and the guy or they, the, the loved up couple at the end and they walk off hand in hand and it's a happy ending. And then I was going to see these Chinese movies at the cinema when I was living there. And one after the other after the other, it was really sad at the end. And I'm like, but this doesn't seem like what I'm used to and it was a completely just a shock just different what we're used to in different culture countries I found it yeah fascinating um Jen I wanted to hand over to you because you have prepared for us a little bit of a what's hot in China right now um I asked Jen to prepare this for us because maybe there are some people watching that want to learn more about Chinese culture and I thought Jen could give us a rough overview of like what's cool right now in China I'm also very excited to see this for myself because I need to learn a bit more about Chinese pop culture. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Okay, so I prepared this, but one or two or three disclaimers are, I am still not an expert. Perhaps I have included things that maybe aren't actually popular. I also did ask my friend to ask, to like just see, inquire about what actually is the, the it thing in China right now. Um, okay, so first thing, let me just show you on this on the screen here. You will see this movie poster. Okay, this is called Xia Yi Zhan Shi Xing Fu. And if okay. you, oh, I've seen that. Listen, if you haven't seen this, you must watch it like ASAP. Have you seen it? I've seen the Taiwanese version. <laughs> it is so good, so good. But we'll talk okay. about it in PowerPoint. Okay, so okay. What's hot right now in in Zhongguo? Let's let's find out. Okay, so let's start. With those. Um, okay, so here is number one. Have you guys heard of this show? No. Ah, yeah. Okay. I haven't so seen it. This is like the it show right now. It's basically about these ladies who are all over thirty years old. All of them have a career in entertainment, but they have come all together to basically. Uh, I guess sing songs and dance, um, and it's kind of like a, a competition show where they like eliminate people and you do performances and that kind of thing um, to find like who will win the competition, that kind of thing. So it's it's I find it really interesting because this one is actually with ladies who are above thirty because most of the shows were actually with like really young people. So this one is kind of like making waves, haha, <laughs> um, in the in the media because I of love them. that. Yeah. Very, very hot show. Wow. Um, okay, so <laughs> yourself. This show literally gets me going. So basically, <laughs> the way that it is told is so amazing. It's about this this case. Okay, so this guy actually interns at this girl's company. Okay, this woman is I think like thirty two or thirty four years old, but this guy is like twenty two or twenty three. They end up falling in love, but she finds out that it's like she thinks that it's wrong, and like society thinks it's really wrong. Um, that kind of thing, but um, genuinely, like this show is not about love as much as it is as literally finding yourself and realizing like what makes you happy. Oh my god, I just got chilled. That was <laughs> that was deep. Um, okay, so yeah, that's that show. If you guys haven't seen it, it's a must watch. It is literally a must watch. I'm probably gonna watch okay. it to actually study love this time because it was that good that I would actually go back and watch. Yeah. Anyway, next. This is just like oh. the itch all the time. I actually have not watched it for myself. My friend said that it's very popular where just like MC and guests will do a bunch of like games yeah. and stuff. Um, so Amy, you've seen it, right? I'm guessing. I've watched a couple of episodes. I always find it a little hard to get into for some reason. Um, I think, cause I think a lot of the draw of that show is they have all these celebrities on it. But right. most of the time I have no idea who the celebrities are. So I'm like, I'm, I, I don't want to just watch this because I, I know who you are. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's my that's my bad, not theirs. <laughs> I just need to learn a bit more. <laughs> well, that's totally fair. I feel like that's why I don't watch it too because I feel like I just don't know anybody. Um, yeah. but, you know, that's something that, that we'll just work on, you know? We're yeah. just going to get to know more people and then we'll... Dayo, iti dayo. Dayo. 
Okay, so what's next here? This one is just about Ooh. like these five people go to different countries and try opening a Chinese restaurant for 20 days. I haven't seen this one either, but I heard that it's very popular. That so, sounds amazing. I want to watch that so bad. I feel like this is very suitable for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of it. I feel like my friend showed me like one episode of this a long time ago and I like the way that they film it. Like I just think it's very interesting to mm. watch. So yeah. Oh, and I've put like places that you can actually watch these shows at the bottom. I don't know if you've like noticed oh. that. Oh, thank but you. If you. Want to watch these, they're like all there. Okay. Yay. Yeah. I love how everything is available on YouTube pretty much. <laughs> like I've watched entire series of shows just on YouTube. Yeah. It's amazing. I love free things, Jen. I just love free things. <laughs> Free, anything free is, is amazing. I'm yeah. Okay, so next up we have Ching Chun Yomi. And let me tell you, so this is like that first show, right? Like this is like this one, except it's the young, the young, like 19, 18 year old, 23, whatever. Um, so it's a lot of it's actually a hundred girls or so, and they're all competing to be in a nine-person girl group. Now, fun fact. Actually, I'm gonna tell tell you more about it when I get to the music section. But this show was so much fun, and you learn a lot of phrases this way. There was also actually a Japanese girl on this on like the second season, and you kind of see how she starts off basically not knowing any Chinese to being like fluent all in the span of five weeks, and it's like crazy. It's nuts. Um, but anyway, really love this show, and also Tai Shu Quinn is on here, and he's great, and Lisa from Blackpink, and they're so fun, and like I just love these judges. All of them are just spectacular, so highly recommend. And you can watch on ITE, the international website. Yes, Yay. amazing. Okay, wow. So now getting into the music. So these were the winners. And let me tell you, they literally came out with their first song two days ago. Two days ago, and this morning I watched their like debut music video, and it was so hip. It was so hip. Okay, and I need to go watch this. It sounds awesome. It is so fun, Amy. Like, like this is also a must watch. And the 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 person who got it, Leo Yuxin, so talented, like unreally talented. Like from the very beginning, I saw her perform like her audition, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I mean? <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah, I'm trying to go through this, like, quickly because I don't want to, like... No, take your time. I I'm super interested in this and hearing your thoughts on these things. Um, so take your time. There is no rush. Okay, lovely. So, J. Cho. Let's just talk about J. Cho for two seconds. Everyone yeah. knows J. Cho. And please tell me you guys have all heard Mojito. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I have a confession. I have a confession. I only listened to Mojito for the first time recently. And the reason was because I went to Jay Chow's, um, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Like milk tea. They, he's opened up a milk tea chain and I, um, it's called Machi Machi. It's delicious. Everyone should go try it. But in the store, they only play Jay Chow music. So <laughs> it was playing on repeat. And I was like, what's this song? I'm really into it. And that's how I learned about Mojito song. <laughs> I love that. First of all, tea, yes. Like, and everyone will need to go to that. I need to go to one ASAP. Oh, it was so good. There's now like seven in Sydney. Um, it's really, really popular. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. Oh my god. Okay. And just like send them to us so that we have <laughs> They're so pretty as well. They come in really cute like little bottles. It's very aesthetically pleasing. I would I would uh, recommend you check it out. Okay. Oh my gosh. Probably not in my city. There's probably not one, but you know. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Today I'll Same. probably and I'll, I'll find one somewhere. I'll send you one from Australia. It'll be slightly off by the time it arrives. You know what? <laughs> the experience and and like the heart was still there. So thank you, Amy. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Anyway, we love his music. Let's move on. Maubui. Okay, I love Ooh. him. I I've never heard of him. Okay, he is. Okay, I literally just made a cover of this of this uh, song on my on my channel, but I love his music. Like, okay, so imagine imagine sitting outside. Okay, Amy, imagine that sitting outside on your balcony and that, like on the beach somewhere, just really yeah. you're hearing waves just crashing onto the shore, or the sound of wind going through some leaves. Okay, so this is what you're picturing, right? And yeah. then you're all of a sudden picturing like somebody wearing like a white dress or something like like really wholesome and warm well, that is what his music sounds like every single song sounds like that 
Can we get up your um your cover? Let's see if we can show your cover to the world. Like I'm gonna try and share my screen and so that everyone can see you. Wait, I'm just going to your channel now. Bear with me. <laughs> it's I wanna hear this so bad. She's such a good singer. <gasps> you both are. Your your voices are amazing. Oh my god, I'm already racing. Sorry. JJ says we you guys try talk amongst yourself for one second. JJ, we told, like JJ said that we should try and get Amy to sing again. <laughs> oh my god, let's not let's not do that. I don't know if you guys saw my last live stream. I tried to sing with JJ says she's really good. I'm really not. I, it was like really bad. Um, I love your confidence though. Like you really like went for it. Went it was beautiful. Not so you know, bad. It's, it was yeah. It was so bad. Yes, Ella, it was really, really bad. Um, but maybe I'll improve. Maybe you guys can give me some tips. Um, which song is the uh, the one to click on? Is it Ping Fang the Yi Tian? Yes. Why? Okay. But just keep in Let mind it's a bit of an intro though. Like I talk before it actually. Okay, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the meaty the meaty section. Oh <laughs> okay. <laughs> the meaty section. Oh my god, I'm already feeling so embarrassed. Is it right at the end that you sing it or you're singing it right through? Like it's kind of like one minute in maybe or like a minute oh, 30 seconds in. Got it. I'm not really sure to be honest. Oh, Number. let me listen. Oh goodness, my heart is racing. <gasps> you guys talk amongst yourself for a second. I'm just finding the, the right <laughs> bit. So we can talk about Happy singing and how good she is and how she sings in so many different languages and how her voice is just melting. Like, no, it's, it's the sound of melting butter. That's what it is. <laughs> Like smooth, and everybody craves it every once in a while. You know, it just. Ah! <laughs> I can't find it. Oh my gosh, Jade, you are such a. You are such a Your boy. name really fits you. Happy. You're always happy. <laughs> Truly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, I'm just happy to be here. It's like you guys who are bringing the joy. I'm just like channeling it. That's all. <laughs> You're bringing it too, Happy. We all feel it. We all feel it. The energy is oh. truly. I can't find it. I can't find it. I, it wasn't the live stream that you did. I'm trying to like sift through it. The live stream. It's just like the, oh. oh, that was a study with me thing. That, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, got it. Regular video, my bad. Oh, I found oh. it. I found it. Oh. Sorry, guys. Yay. Many apologies. Yay. Um. Okay. Heavy Ooh, Here we go. I'm gonna share my screen. Ah! Oh, um, Chrome tab. Um, singing in Chinese. Share. Oh, goodness. Can you guys see it? Okay. Here we go. Oh, goodness. Can you hear it? Oh. No, you're, you're sharing. <laughs> There's no sound. Oh, is there no sound? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> So that's where you would okay. just, like, with your screen, you would push the unmute button, yeah? I guess. Oh, wait, let me with see. with your computer, there's again. probably the kind, yeah? I don't know why it's not working. I'm sorry. Everyone, you should go check it out. It's really beautiful. I can hear it in my ears, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, go, go, go subscribe to Jen's channel. Go subscribe to everyone's channel. Um... Beautiful people, beautiful voices. Um, let's go back to your screen here. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm sorry for that interruption. That's okay. But I got to hear the voice and it was You're beautiful. It's largely on the screen where everyone could see. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep going. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Happy is ha having like some kind of conniption down there. <laughs> Honestly, no, it makes sense. Like that reaction makes sense. Because Happy, what's going on there? Why are you so excited? <laughs> There's a story behind this, I'm sure. <laughs> Happy, like what's happening? He's, uh, uh, he's my favorite. <laughs> I've, I've you are fangirling so hard. I'm really hard right now. Sorry, Jen, you go ahead. I'll just ignore it. I'll be okay. That was literally the best reaction I have ever seen to <laughs> an anything. <laughs> You've gone to a completely different octave beyond our range of hearing. My dog, I think, can hear you upstairs. <laughs> oh 
Oh my goodness. I've never seen a reaction like this. Um, he is quite cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this song, I don't know like what this character is. <laughs> but, yeah, that one. I think so. Great. Mm. So, I, I feel like he just released this song, but yeah. happy you can tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Um, and I listened to it again yesterday for the first time. And I fell yeah. in love with this song so much. That is why it is bolded, because that is a recommendation. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that, Jen. I will go and listen to it. Um, wow, happy. You really love this guy. Um Okay, we, we have a history, okay. Oh, oh you do? You yeah. do? Well, like, okay, okay, how, okay, maybe that doesn't translate very well. So, like, okay, so he was my very first, like, kind of like huge, huge, huge like Chinese celebrity crush. And then I went to his um Yan Chang Hui in Shanghai in Arling Yi So in 2017 I went to his um like concert in Shanghai, mm -hmm. which is his Lao Jia. So that's his hometown. Then he came to America and in San Jose held a concert and I went to that in 2018. And I was the only foreigner there. So he called me out in the audience and I spoke <gasps> Shanghainese to him. So and then that oh went viral. Oh my gosh. So Oh my gosh, are you serious? Yeah. That's that is so, so cool. Yeah. So my next goal is to sing with him someday on Chinese TV. That's my next goal. Well, but yes, his maybe music we can make this, happen. Maybe we can make this video go viral. Here we go, Happy. Can you can you sing us some of his song? And maybe he'll, I don't know, he definitely won't say it, but maybe he will. <laughs> okay, so Yan Yuan is his most famous song, yeah? So, okay, go for it. <laughs> And, and so on, but yeah. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Okay, please, Joker Shu, please come and find us. Um, go live with Happy. She's happy. <laughs> Make her dreams come true. Um, <laughs> That is so cool. I know that song actually. I it's always on like at Miniso or something. Like I'm sure yeah. it's always on in shops. <laughs> it's always on. It's everywhere you can find. But Jen, I love yeah. that you like heard his new song. Like that's gotten really popular. But yeah, I just love his music because I feel like his story as well, like is just a beautiful story of redemption. And oh. like it really like just inspires me as an artist, and that his songs, especially Zijin, like Guai Ka, is one of his songs. That's um, in the lyrics it says, "If I choose to be a freak, I won't um, be scared of you laughing at me." So like he's just like his music is so deep and so artistic and so beautiful. It just speaks my everything. And so I like he taught me what love means in Chinese. Is <gasps> basically like little background. That's it. But yes, that's why he's like really also about really like cool. On a complete side note, um, I found that there's just so many ways of expressing yourself emotionally and talking about love in Chinese. Like there are so many different phrases and chong yu and ways to go about it and. I remember one of my first impressions of the Chinese language is it's just so poetic. Like there are 5 billion different ways of saying the same thing. Um, yeah. So nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, It's so beautiful. Like love means so much more in Chinese to me. I think like Chinese is much more my love language. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Like, yeah. But yeah, it's so true. It's so poetic. Sorry, Jen, go ahead. <laughs> I really love listening to that. Like, I feel like later I'm just going to come to you and I want to hear more about your love for him and what's inspiring you because I'm just very curious now. And I feel like we talk, talk like years old. I'm really excited for that. So I will be coming to you later. Oh, yes, please. I could go out forever. And I've got videos for you. Yes. too. Girl, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let us move on. Okay. So we've also got. I know him. Um, he, I literally watched like a movie and he was in the movie and I was really confused yeah. for a second, but turns out he's also an actor. I didn't know that before. Um, but that's a fun fact. And apparently he also lives in Canada, which was also very interesting. But yeah. that's oh, cool. wrong now. Like, I don't know where he's at now, but there was a point where he did. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't really listened to much of his music, to be honest, but uh, apparently he's very popular. So... I've heard of him, so he must be popular. If I've heard of them, <laughs> they're well known. 
Amazing. <laughs> we love him. Okay, and everyone is uh, the classic. I just say oh. Jim, but I don't know like how her name, like it's actually like G E M or like I've never heard her Chinese name before. Um yeah. so Deng Zi Qi. So Deng Zi and then Jem is like usually what people say. Yeah, but Deng Zi Qi. It took me forever to learn her name. Like Okay, well that's good. That makes me feel a little bit better because I don't really know a lot of their names in Chinese because on Spotify everything's in English. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm the same with Netflix. People are like, I'm trying to explain to my Chinese friends what shows I'm watching at the moment. But on Netflix, all I'm seeing is the name in English. So I'm like, you know, it's called Well Intended Love. Like, <laughs> and then I have to try and, you know, describe the storyline to them. It's so awkward. And every single movie. <laughs> anyway, um, please continue, Jen. I completely feel that. Well, I'm glad that this is not just a me problem and that it's more of a Western thing that we experience. Good. Yeah. Right. So that's, yeah. Oh, she is absolutely fantastic and a uh, powerful voice. And it's like every one of her songs is amazing. And also on Doin, she is just amazing. Like, her, she's so funny. I love yeah. watching her. Doings. So just love her. Okay. Mm. Anyway. Amazing. So let's go on to movies really quick here. Um, I'm going to try to go through them quite quickly. I don't know a lot of movies, to be honest with you. I don't watch yeah. a lot of movies, but. Oh. This one is. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> it was so good. Was it good? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, okay, I, I don't. Okay, I want to talk about it, but I don't want to like give you ma massive spoilers. But actually, okay, no. The, <laughs> I just want to explain the vague concept okay. because I find it fascinating, and you'll know that you'll know it in the first like five minutes of what the concept is. So it's not going to be a massive spoiler. <laughs> so for people at home, it's basically this movie of how. The sun is expanding and is going to swallow the earth in like a hundred years time. So something needs to be done. So they've decided to take the earth from our galaxy into another galaxy. And to do that, they've basically made massive jets, like propeller jets on one side of the earth. <laughs> and then they make the earth like this giant spaceship that just like what, is just flying to another galaxy. <laughs> It's so interesting. So there, there's that concept for you, but you'll know it in the first 10 minutes. So that's not really a spoiler, but um, yeah, crazy, crazy concept. Sometimes I have like dreams about it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it really influenced me deeply into my soul. I think it will be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when I was watching, I was like, this is, this is crazy. This is so trippy. Um, but like my friend is actually in this movie he not not one of the main characters so my friend he lives in beijing he's one of my good friends he went off for like a month on a filming project um as like an extra and he wasn't allowed to tell me what the movie was because he was under an nda and he didn't even know what the movie was because it was so under wraps but basically people started telling him like i just saw you in the wandering earth project he's one of the people at the end that's like helping to like push the door um <laughs> It was, yeah, so random. Anyway, um, he, on to you, Jen. <laughs> and that's so interesting. Like, yeah. It affected you, and then your friend is inside of it. Like, this, like, you've got some connection to this film. <laughs> oh, yeah. Deep and mm -hmm. visceral connection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, oh, God, I'm so interested to actually watch this. I'm, I'm literally going to watch it tonight. Watch it tonight. Call me after. Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> okay, totally, totally. I'm very curious about this now because of how it's described. Like, the name of it, The Wandering Earth, I kind of had a feeling the Earth was moving somewhere, but there's so many scientific questions I have. You know? <laughs> me too. Honestly, me too. <laughs> like, it's still light when they're traveling. Like, there's, they, they have, like, this massive light bulb, essentially, in front of the Earth so that there's still some light coming. Um, but it seems that the ga the atmosphere is still intact. You can go outside and there's still like, I believe there's still oxygen. It, yeah, it's interesting. Um, watch it. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, I'm so I'm so curious about it. Like I'm I'm going to watch it right after we're done this live stream. I'm just going to turn it on. Okay, <laughs> I'm so excited about it. Okay. Yeah. And then, have you guys heard of this one? No. Oh. Okay. So I have a story about this. So I actually, when I was in Harbin, I was in Harbin right when this movie first came out. And I went to go watch it because it was like one of the opening days. But for some reason, my friend bought tickets for like 11 p.m. And 
it, this is one of the movies in China that does not have English subtitles because a lot of them mm. definitely do, but this one didn't. Um, so not only was it 11 p.m., but I, I was, I, so I was tired and there was no subtitles. So it was hard to keep up with it. I ended up falling completely asleep. <laughs> out that this movie became so big that I regretted falling asleep so bad. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose, okay? I was it was yeah. eleven PM. Why would I go see a movie at eleven PM? That's crazy. But you know, I did it. You say that I went, it's fine. But anyway, so this film is actually kind of a more um, what's the word for it? Like spiritual, I guess. So I kind of wrote the thing down here. So it's it's basically like there's two different kind of beads. Like there's a spirit bead and a demon bead. Um, and then basically the spirit bead helps like build your empire and like helps people that kind of thing the demon bead turns into a demon or something and also hurts people so it turns out that the beads actually got switched at one point <clears throat> so this person thought they had the spirit bead but actually it was the demon bead um and it was actually this per this, this little guy so yeah. um yeah and there's an entire story behind it and it was actually the second highest grossing film of all time in China. so it's on netflix yeah. Probably watch it again because I didn't do a very good job the first time. But yeah, it seems kind of interesting. Awesome. Mm. I'll check it out. Yes. Animated, but very it looks very good. Have you guys seen this? No. no. Oh my god. Hey, this is probably the best film I have ever watched in my life. Oh like, my god, okay. This movie Thanks, was so hmm? Oh sorry, I thought somebody said something. Okay, anyway. This is like, okay, so it's basically about, oh, it's really hard to kind of describe, but basically there's a bunch of these like sick people um, in China and there's only one type of medicine that can help cure them, um, but it becomes illegal in China. And so this, like, there's a lot of like smuggling and stuff that happens. Um, but then this one guy gets basically asked to go to India to pick up some of this stuff and then smuggle it into China, um, and that kind of thing. and. Basically, it's his journey of, of going through all of this, and you can really see all of this emotion. And it's one of those ones that made me cry. Um, but it's one of those ones that I will never fail to watch. Like, like you can ask me to watch it as, like as many times, and I'll do it. Like, it's so, so, so good. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, you've got me hooked. I'm, I've got a lot of things to watch and listen to after this. <laughs> no kidding. Okay. Well, yeah, I think like there are a few more, but I'm just gonna like pop them up here because I, I, I haven't watched yeah. it myself. Um, but maybe it'll be, let's see, it might be interesting to some people. So these yeah. are some of the popular ones, but that's about it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Jen. That was, I feel like I've got, I'm a bit more up to speed and I need to go and consume some more media. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanted to actually bring up the topic now because learning pop culture isn't only useful um, to be able to chat about pop culture references with your friends in China. It's also amazing for upping your Mandarin skills. Like for me, I know it's one of my favorite ways to study Mandarin is by watching a Chinese TV show. I pause it, I um, I look at the subtitles, I write down any of the unfamiliar characters, I study those and I, I use it as a tool of studying. I was wondering if you guys had a similar experience and if you guys had any tips and tricks for how to use Chinese uh, pop culture to enhance your Chinese skills. Um, Happy, we'll start with you. Okay, so I kind of prepared some of the things that I use for yep. studying. So I yep. love to study through lyrics specifically. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens when you try to learn a Zhou Jielun song though. This like, oh, wow. so I, I don't suggest that doing that at the beginning. But if you go for like um, some of like the older songs, so what I'll mm -hmm. do is I'll usually like take the song and I've got a lot of them, yeah. So I'll usually mm -hmm. like, for example, these have got lots of different songs. So some of them are rap, some of them like just translating to try and understand kind of what like the lyrics mean. So mm. for example, she had put up one of the songs like Zhou Jie Lun, so mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And what I'll do here is that I'll print out the lyrics and then I'll put like I'll read through them. So I know cafe like by heart right but then maybe mm. other lyrics here i don't know so so yeah. who knew like like before this song right so <laughs> and and so these are all like 
um, words that I didn't know before. But then I, yeah. when you're singing it, you don't use the sheng diao. So I also mm. wrote in the sheng diao for the ones that I don't understand. So this has been like a really useful word. I also learned like some tongue yu this way too, because otherwise Amazing. I would not probably use these in daily life. So yeah, so that's the way that I learn. That's <laughs> awesome. I've never used um, that tool before. I haven't really listened to many Chinese songs, but I really should because it seems like it's a great way of getting the words in your head. Because it, even today, like if you were to play a song for me that I was in love with 10 years ago, I would still be able to recite all the words from memory. So I think when you learn songs, it just sticks in your head that much more. Um, so thank you for sharing that tip with us, Happy. I really need to look into that. Um, what about you, Ella? How do you use Chinese pop culture to help you with your Chinese. Okay, so as far as Chinese pop culture is concerned, in terms of songs, I would say that um, the rule still sticks. That's how mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. So for me, I don't write the words out. I listen more. I try to... Um, pronounce whatever I hear them say, the way they say it, and that's it. So, do, do, sho, sho, do, do, ting, ting. <laughs> and that's the rule. I, I don't yeah. type out um, the words. I make sure that I goes on. I make meaning out of the song. Yeah. So, that's it. That's really good. And I think that's that's really true. The more you listen, the more you speak, the more, the more you do everything when it comes to a language, the better you're going to get. So, I think that you know, there are levels to how active you can be in your Chinese learning process. But even just sitting down in front of a Chinese TV show, that's learning. Like that's getting information in your brain. Like it may not be as fast and effective as if you were watching the TV show and then writing down the words and then studying them afterwards and studying how to put that in a sentence and then making a song out of the lyrics that you've learned in this new, you know, there are different levels. But sitting, like that's a great way of studying. So just listening more, speaking more, like you'll get there at the end. Um, what about you, Jen? What's your preferred way of studying um, when it comes to Chinese pop culture? I think for myself, it's mostly like I use it to help me with my listening practice because yeah. like, I'm still a student, right? So um, I can't put like so much time into it, but I try. So I think like I kind of do the same thing as happy when it comes to studying songs, but like, wait, I guess I can show you what I do because like for me, I'm really like, into I guess Kate like kind of like this like I write down the lyrics mm -hmm. um but like only for like easier songs because otherwise it's too hard um or I guess when I'm listening to to I guess dramas or whatever then that just helps me really puts me in the environment um yeah like, you know I really like to watch shows to unwind just so like I just yeah. think great listening practice it's really nice um, but yeah. I can actually do what you've been doing, which is like actually sit down and like write it out afterwards or write down the characters I don't know. Yeah. I think that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, it helps a lot. Notes from you and, and try to do that. Yeah, I found it a really effective way, especially when I found a show that I really loved. I was watching one show called Detective L. I've talked about it all over my videos and on my Instagram story. I found it such a fascinating kind of story and uh, I really just couldn't wait to sit down and watch another hour of this show. So that really helped. But the bad thing about that is it was a murder mystery show. So I learned all this vocabulary about like murder weapon, you know, blood stain, all of these funky language that I probably won't need to use in my day to day life. Um, but I found it a really great way. Once you're in the habit, like, OK, this is my Chinese time. I'm sitting down. I'm going to do an hour of practice. You get into the habit of, you know, writing down the words, studying the words. And it really does um, help. I, I've kind of fallen out of that habit now. I've gotten like a little bit busier um, after lockdown has been lifted. So I need to get back into that. Um, you guys are really inspiring me today on this live stream. Um, but I've got, we've got a really exciting section coming up where Happy is going to be sharing with us some Chinese internet slang meme culture. I'm so excited for it. But I just wanted to shout out a few super chats. Um, thank you so much for your super sticker. Um, I had another couple here. Just going to find them. Um, we've got another one here that says, uh, okay, Chinese. Oh. Oh, it's a song. Is that? Do you recognize that song, anyone? Xiao Tian the Feel yeah. like I feel like someone, one of my friends, have sung it at KTV before, but I don't know it. But I'll I don't have know to it listen. either. 
but thank you for your super chat. Um, yes, um, so, okay. Oh, wait, one more super chat here. Um, Kerry here has watched, I don't know those characters. No, oh, I guess those are... Like Lee, oh, yeah. Then, yeah. Then oh, awesome. and I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think um, listening to songs and watching TV shows is a great way of brushing up on your Chinese, especially if you've learned Chinese in the past and you've like not done anything for a year or two. Watching Chinese TV shows is such a great way of just getting your head back into the, the vibe. Like sometimes if I've got an interview or an important phone call in Chinese, I'll just sit down for, for a day and just watch Chinese TV shows to get my ear back. Um, but yeah, very helpful. Happy, over to you. Um, the moment we've all been waiting for. Could you please share with us your? It, I've got it on the screen. Um, so, so Happy is going to be sharing with us. Oh, I'll do a little. Um, I'll do a little um, introduction. So Happy is going to be sharing with us some of the ch Chinese internet culture in China. There are so many like internet words and slang and memes, which is just as much a part of the pop culture as anything else. And I find it really fascinating. So Happy is here to give us a bit of a lesson. Um, Professor Happy, please continue with your lecture. Okay. Welcome everybody to Happy's Little Corner of Chinese <laughs> Memes. We're going to go over Zhongguo Zhou Biao Qing Bao. Yeah, so the Biao Qing Bao. So what's really interesting? Can you explain, interesting yes. can you explain what a Biao Qing Bao is um, yes. for people who may not be aware of what a Biao Qing Bao is? Mm -hmm. So Zhongguo is Chinese, right? And then Biao Qing Bao. So Biao Qing is your expression or as we've like recognized the word emoji from Japanese as like the little like expressions, like the little smiley faces and stuff that we use when we're messaging people. And then mm -hmm. bao, so bao kind of means like a package of them or like a, like a, like a, just a, an array of different, different kinds of um, like uh, expressions. So this mm -hmm. is more of like the emoticons or like um, memes as we also say. So with Chinese memes, what's interesting about them is that anyone can make them the entire internet is flooded with them, and there's just really endless creativity that <laughs> and, oh, with the different kind of memes that people are making. So once something becomes funny, it can it will just like explode over the internet. People's are people like in school make memes of each other all the time, and then use them in the group chats. Like it's very normal. I have one Chinese friend who said that he was the main meme <laughs> like, face in school so that in all of their like group chats that his like face always became a meme and everyone was always taking picture of him wow. like because he would have a different face like every single time so, so like even for me i kind of have like multiple different kind of like expressions and stuff so uh, in chinese people would say like wow you could make like make your face into a bao ball and i'm like yay yeah. like, kind of people thing. say so, that to me a lot as well because i i, I find that i'm like I, did, I didn't never realize how expressive my face is. I think it's only since making videos that I've realized, oh, wow, that was quite an expression I've got there. <laughs> and people are like, oh, you should just make some Biaoting Bao. Um, <laughs> I love it. Right, which is a compliment. It's totally a compliment, just saying. Is it? I think it's just different. <laughs> because, yeah, I'm just so out there with my, I didn't realize that my face was so easy to read. Like when I'm annoyed, you can really see it on my face, even though I think I'm being subtle. Or when I'm happy, you can definitely see it on my face, even though I think I'm being subtle. It turns out I'm just not a very subtle person. Wow. <laughs> Right, which is a beautiful way of trying to like, and it has its ups and downs of being a ball kind of person because then people can read what you're thinking, right? And then when you're trying to hide what you're thinking, right? Like you're like, oh, yeah. I'm not saying it, so it's okay. But they can read it in your face and it's like, darn. Oh, yeah. Oh, they figured it out. But yeah, so they're making biao qing bao, so Chinese memes. So I'll go over just a few of the different kinds that there are. So with like, what memes are popular in China? So this kind of shows um, even just like some really cute like just kids and then also here is a picture of um people that have notices about renting apartments and they're using <laughs> memes <laughs> and so wow. these are the main two kind of memes that you'll find in like chinese meat pop media so today i'm going to go over five different <laughs> kinds so you have like the panda head you have the mushroom head chinglish 
famous people and then mm -hmm. references. So these are just like a few examples of like the beautiful ocean of memes that there are in China. So first is going to be the panda head. Yay! So panda head or like xiong mao tou is going to be just like it's just flexible, right? Like they can be whatever you want it to be. So these are kind of what you would put in when you're like responding to someone, when you're reaching out to someone, when you're reacting to what someone had said. So like, for example, these three that are here, like the middle one just says, hi. So you could use this in any way that you want, right? So just like, hi. Like kind of like feel like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> then you have the one on the left, which is a liao tian jie shu. So he's throwing a grenade, right? Like, Grenade. End of conversation. Well done here. <laughs> kind of feeling. So you put this at the end of a conversation. Then you have on the right, like the ni xiang hao zai kai kou. So like after you've thought about it, then you can talk. Kind of feeling like, okay, don't talk to me right now. Like you think about it and then we'll talk. Kind of feeling. So there's this beautiful sass that you can express through like these different like emojis and different memes. And so I just think they're so much fun. And you'll see them in like newspapers you'll see them in just kind of every different aspect because they're very um just openly like uh accepted and mm. just really how people connect with their audiences because it's a like a familiar funny face so that's panda head the next one is little mushroom head so oh, they're like, I know head, they're, like <laughs> really flexible they can be used for like anything so as you can see here on on the right left corner on the right um bottom corner there yeah. it's like the same picture but then it has a different like um caption to it so you can basically make the caption whatever you want which is so yeah. much fun so the one in the middle is hai tao, hai tao, hai tao, hai tao. so hai tao, it's a song right so it was a really famous song like two years ago and so the little guy like the little mushroom head he's dancing to it so i thought that was really funny so maybe somebody said something about like hi or ta and then you would throw this one in or maybe you're just wanting to dance in the middle of something or it's something reminds you of hi ta and it's like hey then you would have the meme you would have the perfect meme for it Okay, the next one that I want to um, show is Chinglish. This is one of the funniest things, like as a native English speaker, like learning mm -hmm. Chinese, this is one of the funniest things. So I want to ask you guys, can you guys read the one on the right, which has the little like yellow, like onigiri looking top. So the yellow hair. Can you, can you um, read that one? Actually, what? And they're really hard characters, happy. <laughs> so this one is totally like chinglish so in so like in way the in choi oh. so like choi feng the choi si, so like um and then ting like a ting oh, yeah. or like uh ting right so in choi si ting like or like a ting bu cuo de right so in choi si ting in choi si ting oh, oh. <laughs> So this is like one of the most English words that you can use when you're sarcastically thinking that something is interesting. So, oh, that's that's interesting. Interesting. So I love that. And then, then the one that's next to it, the panda head one, says, "Uh, so this is I like like I at so like when you at somebody on like Twitter or something I and then right um I read and then ba di." And then, Jian Kang the Kang, and then, Bang Mang the Mang. So, everybody, Kang Mang. Everybody, Kang Mang. Oh my gosh. Everybody. <laughs> yep. So, you got wonderful examples of this. So, there are ones where are they Chinglish? The other one, the one with the lightning right there, is a recent meme where this one, Dongbei guy, like as going to Harbin, you'll appreciate this. A Dongbei guy speaking um, Russian. <laughs> so he's speaking Russian with a really heavy Dongbei accent. And so he said, Lei Tian Gaba. So Lei Tian Gaba, now everyone on the internet uses this, like talking about something is like Basa the Bear or something is awesome or like Li Hai, Lei Tian Gaba, which is like Dongbei like style Russian. So that's already gone over. And then the one next to the lightning guy, 
Um, if you guys have watched elementary Chinese, Kuejo, he says this all the time. Good, good study, day day up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one is um, you, CCU, because it's kind of similar to me, Pan Kan Ni. You, CCU. I like that one a lot. You, CCU. Exactly. It's so much fun. And then when one ghost, what's the ghost? <laughs> What's the ghost? Oh my god, amazing. Yeah, so these are priceless. And I think as like English speakers, like you're just really able to appreciate these on a whole other level. So that's yeah. one type. And then here's another interesting type of using famous people. Here's our beautiful Xie Zhixian. And then we have, um, can you guys recognize the two others? So Xie Zhixian is the one on the right. Zhen Jingbia is one of his most like commonly used phrases or one of his most like Jing Dian, like just classic phrases. And then here, Jen or Amy or, or Ella, are you guys able to recognize the other two? So the one that's right. next to the cat. Can you recognize the one next to the cat? You're looking for death. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so can you recognize the Mingxing? No. Oh, wait. Yes. Is, that, is it Chris Wu? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> Oh yes. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> and then the one over to the lower right, um, that's mm. Huang Zetao. So Huang Zetao, he was originally in EXO, also a part of EXO back in the day. And um, he has <laughs> has a very famous phrase, Go Dai. So Go oh, yeah. is dog, and then Dai is like to like carry something, right? <laughs> but oh, it sounds like Go Dai, like go die <laughs> so this is used very commonly like go away or be quiet right like go die, right? Mm -hmm. so which is really funny so if you're if you have friends that they'll they're a daigo this there's also go die so don't try and mix those up so daigo is someone who like brings <laughs> like goods from one country to the other in their suitcase to sell and then go die is to go away. <laughs> Very different. So Huang Zetao made that really popular. And then over here, these wonderful shirtless guys. This is um, <laughs> this is a like eighties, like made in the nineties, about the eighties, like Hong Kong um gangster movie called a Gu Huo Zai, which is amazing and very scary. So Gu Huo Zai, and it's Deng Ni Xia Ke. So Deng Ni Xia Ke, like wait until you finish class. We we're out. Like meet me outside. Like, yeah. About that kind of thing. So <laughs> it's so expressive. I love it so much. Right. Yeah. So these are so much fun. And then this one um references so gung. So it's like a gung like these. So the dog. So in Chinese, the way that you say single can also be like dan sheng go, right? So a single dog, single dog, single dog, single all the way kind of feeling. So yeah. single dog, uh, go. So this go is used very often in all of his, like in all of the means regarding, oh, 对, no do, no die, why you try, no try, no high, can fly, give me five. <laughs> <laughs> you can you up, no can no be here. So yeah, Chinese is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh we can go. So the two goals that are right there, right, now, right. Like so, you can dance go. It's like, like, oh my gosh, there's a single guy like watching us, like, which is which is what it feels like every time a single person sees a couple. They're like, I, like, you're like right in front of a dance and go. So then the one over to the side, which is the boy, like with the like in interesting expression, more more da. So this is actually uh, like, <laughs> uh, like a Cantonese boy who is very expressive. So his yes. entire face is a biao jing pao, right? When he was reading a poem in Cantonese, he was reciting a poem on this one little TV show in Cantonese and just so much of a biao jing pao kind of like expressions that it became a biao jing pao. <laughs> I love that. Which is like kisses. Then you got the little bunny, which is commonly used like so where is the um, dialect of Do you guys know? Do you guys know nope. where that's from? Chinese is Hua. So it's like ni chou cha. This is what like a Dongbei person would say. Yep. So in like probably Caribbean that kind of area. So that's used very often. <laughs> like what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Like, 
And then the little, um, the little like cute like baby with the little like like cat ears, right? So that's Ben Bao Bao Kaisi. So Ben Bao Bao. So Ben Bao Bao is like a really like cutesy or like over the top cutesy way to address yourself. Hmm. Ben Bao Bao Kaisi. Yeah, it's kind of the way that you do that. Yep. Yeah. And then we have the adorable little baby like dancing over here. And so there is this song like. <laughs> Hocus pocus, bow chi, bow chi, bow, bow chi, bow chi. And it sounds like ba, wu, chi, oh. ba, wu, chi, ba, oh. wu, chi. So, five, <laughs> <laughs> so you have like eight, five, seven, eight, five, seven. It's now like the dunz, kats, dunz, kats of China because of that song. Bow chi, bow chi, bow, bow chi. That's so funny. <laughs> wow, I'm so learning so much on this screen. <laughs> No, that was fantastic. That was so great. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I literally feel like I've learned so much in this live stream today. <laughs> Having such a fun time. Um, guys, we're nearing the end of our stream. I, this is the time where you guys plug away. Um, where can people subscribe to you? Where can people find you on Instagram? What are you working on that you want to direct people towards? Jen, let's start with you. Oh goodness. Okay. Um, if you want to find me on YouTube, you can just search my name, which is like right there, or you can just search that's really Jen and you'll also find me on YouTube, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's really Jen. Okay. I'm writing it in the comments. Um, um, what about you, Happy? Okay. So mine is the Asian enthusiast. And I am working on a video explaining the time that I got to sing along with Wang Li Hong. Yay! And some other fun things. Yep, but there will be much more content once I get out of quarantine and I don't just have a little background of my, my stuffed animals. I'll have a big background of my stuffed animals. Yeah, <laughs> girl. Can't wait for that. What about you, Ella? Where can people find you? Um, and, uh, and what are you working on at the moment? What can we get, get, you, get ready for? On Instagram and on YouTube at Chinese Black Olive. And at the moment, I'm working on um, posting a lot of videos on Chinese dishes because I haven't been, been good with posting those ones in the past. So I'll be posting lots and lots of Chinese dishes. Yay! Very Fantastic. Soon. I can't wait to say that. Um, awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming on this stream with me today and for sharing with me some more things about Chinese pop culture, something I really need to get more into. Um, and for giving me inspiration to keep going with my Chinese. Like, seeing you guys just makes me want to try even harder. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you to everyone watching at home on the live stream. And, yeah, let's chat soon. Let's do this again soon. Yeah. No, thank you so much. It means so much fun to talk with all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been oh. awesome, Happy. You've made thank me so, so happy. Much. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I wish everyone a very lovely rest of their day um, and weekend, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.